So we've just finished production of a documentary with Ken Duncan and Ray Martin. Mostly it was this sense of following Ray Martin on this journey into this you know, really remote part of Australia with Ken Duncan. The actual production was in the Kimberleys and some of the most trying conditions that we've operated in. The whole production was heavily based on, on the beautiful scenery and really capturing the, the beauty and the, the splendour of where we were actually shooting. We were doing that was by using our hexacopter with a stabilised gimbal underneath. We shot on a variety of different formats. One of the formats that we were quite excited to take away was the GH4, a Panasonic's uh, new DSLR, I guess, but a powerful video camera as well. So being long-time Panasonic users and being able to shoot in 4K, really being able to push the boundaries of what's achievable in terms of quality when flying uh, with drones. The camera is a really serious contender. It can do up to 200 megabits a second, and that gives you an enormous amount of latitude in post-production uh, to grade it and to really push and pull the image you know, into a, a place where uh, you want it to be. The other you know, factor is the, the 96 frames a second at, at full 1080 resolution. It comes in useful on so many, so many different shots that we were doing. And then, of course, the 4K. The product we're producing, of course, is not in 4K, it's only in 2K, but that allows us to stabilise those shots to a really significant degree. I mean, we can even resize and create new shots in one master shot. Most of the action that we were filming was actually done in some of these remote locations, uh, like horizontal waterfalls where we had to launch uh, directly off the front of the tinny, which is a five metre uh, speedboat. So we launched uh, our drone off that, which was carrying the GH cameras, and effectively landed there as well. Being able to do that in our size uh, of drone was something that we wouldn't actually do with a larger camera. The GH4 is designed for stills. However, when you put it into a rig, it's able to be shot off the shoulder make it an absolute usable camera that is a, you know, a pleasure to shoot with. It's not too heavy, it's recording to um, normal SD cards, it's you know, able to play with other lenses. These things make it easy to integrate into your, your kit. Our biggest limitation is the weight. So the GH series of cameras for us uh, is an ideal choice because our gimbals are limited to weight, also so is our flight time. You can carry red epics and that sort of thing and we can achieve you know, five, six minutes flight time. Uh, with the current GH series of cameras and our drone that we've got set up, we're achieving 10 to 13 minutes of flight time. We went into uh, the Kimberley at the end of the wet season, before the wet season actually finished. So it was an incredibly hot time of year up there and Ken said at one stage it was hot to the point that he could have fried an egg on the top of it. So previous generations of cameras have kind of, that's where they start to fall over and become really, really flaky and certain functions won't work as the humidity gets into the shape. But the actual GH4 that I was shooting on did exceptionally well the whole way through. It's a, it's a game changer being able to shoot with the drone in 4K with the amount of flight time that we're getting, there's a lot of people around the world who are really excited about uh, using the GH4 in a whole range of different applications. The GH4, I think, in one camera gives you just a whole bunch of little tools now in a small, very you know, affordable camera body. It's kind of the one that you don't leave home without.